I wasn't going to do fish tank stuff, but uh, then I started my spiel and Prude started digging in the bo in the litter box, so I'm waiting for her to stop her digging. And this corridor is being adorable on this penny royal leaf. It's like he's taking a nap. Look how cute he is. Or she. I don't know what you are. They're such sweet little gardeners. They keep everything, you know, as tidy as they can. I'm an overfeeder omatic, so everything's filthy. And this tank is just, I don't know, it's finding its happiness. It's finding its kind of... It's finding its groove. And there's lots of life, which is good. I've got all these these snails, and I thought they were all the same kind, but some of them have really fat little uh, uh, horn horn bits. Uh, they're they're not eyes. They're usually like a sensor. I think on the mystery on the apple snails, they might be eyes, but. Um, I don't think they are with these fellas and and or gals because I don't think these really are really are are gender are gender specific. But look at the the horny bits on him on this one, and then look at they're so different over. Where are you? Over here. Finger, finger. Please focus. Anyway. They're like little hairs. And this is a very, this is a smaller specimen, but this other one has kind of a clear shell. I don't think they're supposed to be clear, honestly. I don't think that's a good thing, but he's really huge. He's really sort of massive. He seems happy enough. And there's lots of these. So something about this fish house is good for them. <laughs> anyway. The fish store guy said that piece of rock was uh, some sort of, marketed as some sort of jade, but he assures me that it's, um, I mean, it's obviously not jade because uh, it would cost a million dollars, but um, it's a green sort of rock made greener by a bit of algae. I love it. He assures me it's inert. <sighs> certainly been noticing some issues with uh, <clears throat> my breathing and my voice. Um, as long as I'm not talking, I'm fine. But when I start trying to sing or speak, my heart races and I lose my breath. So I'm sorry for the shakiness. I'm just actually sort of digging. I, I like looking at this through the zoom. It's quite fun. I did a little bit of rearranging. And I think I covered up my little my little bits of grass. I don't think they're really a grass. I don't know what they are. They do these uh, kind of like corn. Is it corn or bananas? There's some kind of plant that uh, really just uh, you would think that uh, you could do a seed or something but it's a it does a pup I think it's a banana anyway and these little grassy things have the same idea oh scarlet and the little charlotte the scarlet uh, temple plant is right in the way taking up all the glory um yeah, I can't show you just now. It's it's doing better, but I accidentally uh, squished him underneath this uh, scarlet stem, and oh, he's he's there. It's there. It's just uh, it's behind the scarlet stem. Anyway, big ugly bulb. I need to anchor that in a better place, and that way the grassy pup thing. Uh, that I thought was dead, but I'm, I'm pretty convinced that it's not dead. Uh, I really want it to thrive, but there's no way it's going to in that tangled up 
jungle of, you know, business. Oh, there's so much gunk on the glass, you can't really see it. Um, I guess it's really not that interesting, especially if it's not even going to focus. All you can see is grossness. Judge all you want, I truly don't mind. <sighs> My little rascals. There's about five or six of them that school pretty consistently, but um... There's three or f three or so are loners. She said the corridors. I tried to establish a bit more of a a sand. Well, it's a it's a finer substrate uh, in the back. Oh, hi, fruit. Would you? Yes. Uh, so in the back. Um, Back behind this clump of plants, where the where the bubbles are coming up, oh, there's a is that a cory? Yeah, that's a cory hiding. I, I get them mixed up with the rocks from the back there. Um, so back there, and then behind this this big lovely uh, not jade jade is just uh, this continues this blue finer gravel, and there's there's uh, I try to keep the big gravel out of it, but um, that's a thing. Uh, and the quarries love digging their barbels in it. It's really cute to watch them. I kind of want to get, I want to try to get some black worms going. I don't know though, because the, the big rocks could really hurt their, their barbels. Uh, if they get super, uh, you know, enthusiastic. So I might not do live uh, substrate food, but. Uh... Oh yeah. I have nightmares thinking about changing the substrate. I don't, it just doesn't seem right when you've already got everything established. And as you can see, I just keep piling fine stuff and <laughs> finds its way underneath the big stuff. Anyway, okay, this video is not about fish tank. This video is about why tarot is not actually scary at all. And how, uh, it's not scary, and, and I just, I guess I just hope that if somebody was going to be curious about it, um, oh, we're eight minutes in, if someone was going to be curious about Tarot, um, and they, and they want, oh, gosh, I'm sorry, I don't need to be putting my family in this, and they, and they want to, to sort of, what is this about? What is Tarot? You know, there's, there's stuff like the devil. We talk about death. Like, it's creepy. Swords, like, that imagery is creepy. And that's, that's tame for Tarot decks, right? The ones I have are like, uh, I don't know blowjobs and rainbows they're they're easy stuff like this is they can the imagery can i mean even just the, the basic imagery in the right or weight uh is is a little maybe more uh i don't know i don't want to say staunch but like it's 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 pretty uh there are details and it's not that they're overly uh, pretty. Like these are using watercolors and they're pretty. The Rider weight has uh, symbols, symbols. So uh, it seems to me like, like a lot of occult th tools and, and memorabilia for, for, for these sorts of mysterious practices in, in the modern day, um, they've evolved with humanity such that I believe it requires a bit of uh, 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 talking ourselves into or trickstering um, manipulation of our of our brains and our bodies in order to sort of um, I don't know I guess co-create or or have a say in in maybe how our lives work because I don't believe that we come in as blank slates and um, and I really I really uh, very firmly believe that it is not uh, one size fits all as far as uh, basic instructions for 
for living on Earth or, or, or leaving Earth or, or however you want to say it. There's no one size fits all right wrong uh, sort of solution. Um, and 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 Tarot just opens us to all the different ways and whys that is. And I, I really think that this is uh, fascinating stuff. And it's just it's, it's there to open your mind, and it's there as you are. It's it's it it meets you where you are, uh, and you 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 learn about it at your own pace. So we can we can read an entire book on on the on the deck, uh, you know, a big a big not just the the little book that the deck came with, but we can read. Ah, uh, book books. I, I had this whole poor people at the library. Anyway, I you know there are lots of books out there, and we can just read them all. And and um, it takes time because just as the seasons change and all of these different things, and our plants take time to grow and they go through different phases. And if we give them, you know, a whole crap ton of potassium when they're just seeds, it'll probably kill them. But if we gave them that same amount when they were about to pop flowers, it might make them really happy. Um, the deck is that way. And, and I, I hope that this uh, overview or, or word vomit session is, is sort of helpful in, in discovering why that is or why it's useful and why it's not scary. The uh, Tarot starts as the Fool's Journey. Uh, it's the story of the Fool's Journey, and, and, and the Tarot is all about energies or ideas, imagery, archetypes, themes, symbology, um, the way our minds work on things. And the imagery with the Fool um, I think I think most mainstream uh, people, uh, sort of like modern modern people today, um, uh, think of a jester or they think of a clown. Um, and I mean, people have baggage with those words. The fool can be uh, oh I feel like such a fool. There can be baggage there, and this deck does take reversals, so there is a shadow aspect to this imagery. But I'm going to focus on sort of this is about starting a journey, and you don't know any better, but that to expect the absolute best and every miracle that is possible. This is faith. This is blind faith, and 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 really, like there's a time and a place for everything, you know. And and this, on its own, for what it is, is beautiful. It's a lovely sort of blind faith. It's a blind faith in self. It's like you're trusting, you're trusting, because you don't know any better, <laughs> and you shouldn't. That's not. But it's uh, yeah. There's a sun. There's a companion. Flowers. He's all bundled up. He's quite he's quite prepared, but he's not exactly weighed down. And then as the fool makes his journey, you know, he, he meets a lot of uh, people along the way. A lot of, of uh, practitioners see this as the fool becoming these different imagery, these different symbols, these different archetypes along the way. We have... Um, in the major arcana, and the tarot is split into major and minor arcana, uh, the major arcana are, are, are sort of core thematic symbols. These are um, big picture, um, very, like, this is the bold print in the quote. And this is the counterpart. The, these are the two separates that come together to make a counterpart. So anytime we're talking about something in life, not just a, a husband, wife, or, or husband, husband, or, or uh, you know, lover, or, or a life partner situation, we're not just talking about um, counterparts as in left hand, right hand, we're not all talking about counterparts, good, bad, we're not talking about, you know, um, we're, we're talking about everything, um, everything that has a spectrum, and if we, if we look at things long enough and squint our eyes well enough, everything is. Um, so the, the Empress and the Emperor represent duality, 
but it's a counterpart. You can have one without the other. You can have them both. A lot of the time when we have them both, we think of something like this, this beautiful card with two lovers, their, their relationship or their union or their uh, desire, their mutual desire uh, is blessed by spirit in the middle there. And they're overwhelmed. They sort of look, uh, I don't know, like a deer in the headlights. But spirit's right there in the middle. That there's not a doubt on that figure's mind, right? Um, so when we have the, the duality in, in uh, balance or in a sort of sense of, of support and action, we have this beautiful union. We have the lovers. Beautiful balance number as well, number six. But when we have um, just the emperor, we have sort of a, <clears throat> just a, a stark, stark masculine only, you know, positive vibration only. We have action force only. And what that draws me to think of, and I wanted to use this deck, but my king of swords has has flown the coop and i have a vague suspicion that I, I really don't find that funny but i, I want to find it funny that, that i hit it for myself um this is the master of war not so much in this deck but um <clears throat> the king of swords is cold think south pole think uh, harsh you know there's the scale in this card which i guess is good because it, it draws me to the you know, it's not bad that it's all one, one-sided. The emperor on, its, on his own isn't all bad. Something like the king of swords isn't a bad thing because he's the, the master of war. There's a time and a place for that. The scale reminds us that there's a time and a place in everyone's life all the time, you know, multiple times in their life if they're lucky and they live long enough, that they will have major balancing to do. And sometimes in order to balance, you have to cut things out and get them out not easy. Sometimes you have to be a master of war. But the master of war doesn't have, you know, the master of war on his own doesn't have the two of cups. It's something like this. It's something like this two of cups reversed, like a, like a combining of emotional elements that, uh, they just don't work two watery sort of emotional elements that just don't work. Or or maybe if we're not even talking about elements, because my mind was blown recently in uh, elements and directions and all that. But uh, <clears throat> if we're talking about cups, if we're talking about vessels, and if you only have one side of a counterpart, and it's all war and fighting and cutting and balance and logic... South Pole. It's cold. And you only have one cup. I mean, okay. If you have two cups and they're not well suited, you know, I don't know what happens with cups. One cup is made out of tin foil or, or a thin layer of gold and the other cup is made out of diamond and you go to do a, a cheers and for crying out loud, you know, that does not work. I'm not saying I've tried it, but it wouldn't, you know, especially if you're, you've had a couple and you're sort of jovial. Anyway, you can't hold things together unless, you know, you have both and they're compatible. Otherwise you end up with... with with the duality where we're like, yes, this is, this is one of those sort of scary placements, a two of pentacles reversed. You know, you have like a, you have like a two timer, you have like a, somebody who's trying to do too many things at once and, and just doing all of them poorly. We do have these scary things, but I mean, when you flip him around, what do you have? 
I mean, this guy kind of looks like he's got more than he knows what to do with. Like, he's come with only having one, and now he's just doubled his money. He doesn't know what to do with himself. He's so happy. So, I mean, duality, it's just all about how we trick our minds into looking at things. So, something that that started out as this fool, this zero point, this, like, (laughs) I, I have no reason but to just trust I have no reason but to doubt that. You know, we go from that and, and, and we realize, we realize that there are these counterpart energies to everything. And, and I'm not going to make assumptions about, you know, the world because I think there is variety and I think that that is sacred. But a lot of us uh, have at least really, uh, you know, subscribe to or bought into the rhetoric around sort of Prince Charming and white picket fences and counterparts being a, a love relationship. You know, we, we start out here, we, and, and what is this? This is six. We've gone from zero to six. Well, what happened in between? Well, well, this happened. We realized our otherness. We realized our duality, Right? And some of us long for this union. And for some of us, this lovers, this is simply being a lover, being a a lover in the world. Either way, what happens in between here and here is this realization of otherness, our loverness. It's our otherness. It's, you know, it's, it, there are so many ways that we can sort of look at things that we thought were really fantastic. Like, they can be fantastic. <laughs> the same things that can be fantastic, one little thing sort of changes and all of a sudden it's a different message altogether. And we can think about other really lovely cards like the, the, the chariot. And in this deck, uh, it's, it's, it's this very motherly, uh, supportive this is what I think of when I think of uh, like a divine feminine I suppose in other decks this really has more to do with masculine energy frankly it's a it's a fast moving forceful uh, whirlwind sort of motive you know it's an automobile you're it's a it's a it's a but I, but I see in this card how I wonder now, you know, Cancer is at home, or the moon is at home in Cancer. I have to wonder, uh, uh, you know, that, that chariot in the sky sort of uh, ism comes to mind. Is there actually a really swift, really uh, um, powerful and... Uh, <clears throat> influential force that is that is also feminine, you know. But these are all beautiful, beautiful messages, beautiful cards. We think of temperance and and look at this card here. Look at look at the cups. We think maybe fluid. We think temperance. We think uh, oh, we think uh, uh, moderation. Temperance is actually a card of fire. Temperance is a card of transmutation and alchemy, my loves. When you see this card and that part of your brain sort of flinches because you want to move towards, where can I slow things down? Are you sure she's mixing liquid? Are you sure it's not spirit? Are you sure it's not electricity? Are you sure it's not souls? This is crazy making. One and four is five. Change. Transmutation loves. The tarot draws us to question long held ideas or or beliefs that we didn't even know we had. And we think of cards like the sun, and the sun is is uh, the the card of the self illuminated. This is beautiful. Look at this happy baby. 
dropped a sucker. He's not even sad about it. He's got sunflowers behind him. I don't know if this artist has sat next to a sunflower stem, but that, that would not be comfy. Anyway, the sun is the self-illuminated. It's sort of unquestionable. It's sort of satisfaction. It can even be smug sometimes, you know. Um, it can just be this fiery, sort of passionate, fast-moving self-illuminated but it, it, when it's reversed you know we can really start getting into some mucky stuff like like the sun we think is beautiful but this is a card that the five of swords that a lot of people flinch at but this exists in the same world as that beautiful sun card that beautiful one nine five five of swords has to do with <sighs> okay yeah yeah you won are, are you happy or, or uh, you got so caught up in making sure everything in that presentation was grammatically correct that uh, you actually lost sleep and you actually performed terribly. The PowerPoint was spot on, but nobody gave a shit because they fell asleep halfway through. You got lost in the competition of it all. That's in the sun too. That's in the self-illuminated. Seven of Pentacles, you know, when, when we're talking about, um, why did I get my sevens in here? These are all supposed to be, oh, this is hilarious. What happened? Hmm. Well, these are supposed to go under the tower, but I guess if we're talking about suns, We'll talk about the moon and we'll, we'll make our way over to the tower, I guess. This is funny. Okay. So sevens, sevens remind me of uh, the tower here. Uh, one, one six, and that's a seven. So, um, but let's, the sun happens, the, the sun comes out uh, on the self or the ego is uh, mm, illuminated, uh, the, the, the sort of um, the scariness is made known, the self is made illuminated, the light is shown after the moon. The sun is one nine, the moon is one eight. So first there's the moon. And uh, at first we have uh, uh, mystery, the, the moon has a lot to do with uh, the occult. It, it, is, it is the occult. It is, uh, the moon is unknown. It's so close to us. And yet, I mean, even today, you know, it's, it's so unknown. Mysteries, uh, mysteries unfold as the moon changes its shape and size. Um, are, are, there, are, there, are there things sort of associated with uh, harvests and and abundance and all of these earthly experiences as well as all of these spiritual experiences like like death cycles and mood cycles are they all related somehow to this mysterious moon sun comes out after these dark these dark moon moments you know the moon is not always uh, uh, sort of a, a good time you know, good night moon and all of these sweet memories. I love you to the moon and back. Well, the moon's actually sort of a, a scary thing. It's it's it's, it's sort of a, a dark, uh, shadowy thing. And and within the under the illumination of the moon, there's a lot of clarity. There's a lot of communication back and forth from the spirit world in the the earthly realm. So it's sort of this middle place, and 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 it's it's sort of interesting. Uh, this middle place is, is where we jump. You jump from the fool. It's like, uh, we, I just, I can't help but feel we have to take some of that blind faith with us because, I mean, the magician is, uh, you can see in his in his hand there, he's got a staff and it. it's I'm pretty sure that's the, the infinity symbol on his staff. Usually the magician carries that, um, I can't think of the word for it right now, but it's that infinity figure eight symbol. Um, it's one of the, the, the ancient symbols that has been on the deck since it's existed. Um, 
and it just has to do with um, manifestation and being in sync with these these cycles, these undulations of of the moon cycles, of the the seasonal cycles, of our minds cycles, of our being cycles. The magician is is a manipulator. Yes, he can be sneaky. Mercury can be a trickster, but the magician is. Uh, He's willing to confront the mysteries of the moon. And we are the magician when we start learning about the mysteries of the moon, the mysteries of the occult. Uh, one eight. So the magician is one eight. I decided to use this eight of swords uh, card to depict uh, the eight and the one eight of the moon. Um, Because in other decks, the Eight of Swords can be uh, the shadow. The shadow side, if it, if it takes a reversal, can really be about a stubborn um, unwillingness to remove the blindfold of your own disillusionment, your own repressed or or blind, uh, ignored, abandoned inner beliefs that maybe you don't even know you have or storylines that you don't even know you tell yourself or judgments that you make about yourself based on um, you know, something you heard somewhere really didn't mean what you thought it did. Not you know, the, the Eight of Swords can really be about a blockage, can really be about not taking off that blindfold. It can also be about absolutely ripping that fucker off. <laughs> And 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 with the moon energy, the the eight in that moon, I, I really feel like this card displays it beautifully because in this deck, it's the 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 major, the Canis Major constellation. Uh, I can't remember the the storytelling, but this is a protector. Stand up for yourself enough to have the strength to take that blindfold off, Mama Bear, whatever. This is a dog, but that's what that eight means to me in the moon. Uh, following um, the eight, wait, what would this be? This is nine, yeah. So the eight in the major arcana is strength. So, I, and I didn't want to use strength as, I mean, it would have been fine um, as my eight to describe the moon card, but uh, the, the, what comes after the eight is is the hermit, is nine. Um um, and this is, this is here, ah, yes, this is here, uh, the hermit in this deck is portrayed or illustrated by use of, of Virgo imagery and symbolism, um, and I, I put it here because it comes uh, after the eight, uh, one eight, uh, but it's, it's also an earth sign that is ruled by Mercury, so how could I not include where earth and magic 